our brother and sister. Today, I am so happy to have opportunity to uh, to be with you guys and to study the Sabbath school lesson. Now, remember that we are here uh, to the lesson 10. Lesson number 10 is uh, the role of stewardship. Yeah, the role of stewardship. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, of course, you know, so far that we have learned so much about stewardship, being stewardship, and now uh, we coming to talk about the role. Of course, the role is so important that uh, remember that, of course, uh, that we learned that to be part of the stewardship is that uh, begin from every follower of Jesus. Uh, soon as we become a Christian and we uh, learn that we are part of the stewardship, which is uh, we all have to uh, give the offering and tie, uh, tie and offering. So, uh, so that we know that tie and offering, we can use this uh, money, this tie and offering uh, for pastor salary and the worker and also for the expansion of the missionary work. So this is uh, very important. So if we, uh, everyone, work hard and try to get uh, more people to be the follower of Jesus. So it also means that uh, the money, the income for the church also will increase. And the more church has the money, the more worker we can have. So uh, it just go together. So, so now asking about the role of stewardship is, uh, of course, is so important. This is the important role. If we, if, if we lacking of uh, tithe and offering, and of course we uh, don't have, uh, don't have the money to supply, and to go out for the outreach, and to get more new believer. So it is it, so important. So I, I, I thinking of uh, just like in the family. In the family, we have uh, so-called breadwinner. Breadwinner bring all uh, go go out and work and earn the money. So bring the bread, bring food for the family. So same thing. Uh, we everyone uh, just like the breadwinner for the church. So this is so easy to understand that the role of the stewardship. And uh, <clears throat> also we want to go out and let people know that uh, God created everything. So everything is belong to God. And so uh, we uh, as a stewardship not only to preserve uh, the property of God, but also try to try to bring more income for the church. And uh, and let's say okay, let's see, let's see. Uh, okay, how crucial as we can see for the role of stewardship for the church. Okay, let's keep keep going, and. Memory text said that for God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. First uh, Thessalonians chapter four verse seven. So this is uh, the our memory text. So it said that God wa want to call us to have a pure heart. Pure heart is so important. We know that when we have pure heart, so we will uh, we will 
have loyalty to God, we will uh, be a, a good uh, <coughs> steward for God. So this all come from the pure heart. Okay. So now, uh, <coughs> now all over here is that. However, neither the Christian nor the church can exist or function without it. So without what? Without the stewardship, and the stewardship is, uh, is you know, uh, to bring some more tithe and offering. Okay, uh, and also it is not a theory, not a philosophy, but a working program, a working program. Okay, let's let's see, let's see, uh, and also we talking about pure heart. And uh, Psalm 12, 6 said, The words of the Lord uh, are pure words. As silver try in a furnace of earth, purify seven times. So this, uh, this verse, this uh, text is so important that we, we, want, we want everyone to know everyone to know that the word of God is so pure and it has been testing. It has been testing for so many times. So we want to convince the newcomer. We want to convince so uh, still many people out there to believe that. Okay. And uh, because of the pure word, pure word of God is, has the truth in there, of course. Okay. Let's, uh, Let's see the next text. Uh, Psalm 119, 105, it said that, uh, None, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So this is also showing that how important the word of God is. So we want to uh, want people to know that the word of God is just like the lamp for our feet, if without that lamp, we, uh, we, we cannot see that which way that we can, uh, can go. And uh, so we have to convince the word of God to uh, other people. Okay, okay, let's continue to see. And First Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, 13, this is very beautiful text. Is said, and so we too constantly thank God that when you receive God's message that you heard from us, you accepted it not as a human message, but as it truly is God's message, which is at work among you who believe. So this is the difference. The difference is the word of God is is uh, you know is not like any other uh, human being saying or theory. So th remember First Thessalonians chapter two verse thirteen. We accept receive the word of God not as a human message. Okay, very important. Okay, let's move on and. Uh, Christ as the center. Of course, we. This is also so important that we, uh, we, as uh, uh, we represent, uh, you know, Jesus and want to uh, spread the gospel. We have to emphasize that Christ as the center. Why? Because in Matthew chapter twenty-eight, eighteen. Is that and Jesus came and sp uh, spake unto them, saying, "All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth." So what it means that all the power. So you know Jesus has all the power, and uh, so that when He command us to do it with the power. So that means that he uh, he endorsed he endorsed uh, endorsed the power to us. So we 
have to take that power and go out and spread the word of God. Okay, let's see some more. Okay, this is uh, Philippi chapter 2, 9. It said, Wherefore God also had highly exalted him, which is Jesus, and given him a name, which is above every name. So Jesus, his name, Jesus is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. So this is, uh, is, is, it is possible, of course, uh, this is the word of God saying, saying that uh, to, to one point, to, to one point that all the knee shall bow and, and accept that Jesus, Jesus' name is above all the name. So when we said all the knees shall bow, and it means that that includes it include righteous and unrighteous person, the follower of Jesus, or even the one that not believe in Jesus. At the, the end, they all will confess and accept that this statement is the truth. Jesus, the word of God, is the, the truth. So uh, this is the prediction. Is is saying that uh, in the future it will happen. So definitely we believe that. And okay, let's move on. Uh, let's move on. Uh, sanctuary doctrine. Okay, we're talking about sanctuary doctrine, and also because uh, as we have some knowledge about sanctuary, what's happening in in the sanctuary. Jesus, after the resurrection, Jesus went up to heaven and to be on the right uh, hand side of the God the Father. And also Jesus, uh, in 1844, Jesus went to the holy place, uh, the most holy place, and to, to, be, uh, to, to be before the Father. And so that he will be our judge and he also will be our advocate. And uh, so he, Jesus, is represent us uh, before the God the Father. So he's, uh, he is uh, helping us. He is trying to uh, get every one of us to, uh, to, to have salvation. So that's why we have to uh, Take Jesus as the center, and uh, and and this message we have to spread it out to let all the people know, and that is our role as a stewardship. So, uh, asking that is this important role? Of course, it is important. Okay, and. Uh, <clears throat> And over here we said the sanctuary doctrine helped to reveal the great truth of salvation and redemption, which is at the core of all Christian theory. In the sanctuary we see not only Christ's death for us, but his ministry in heavenly sanctuary as well. We can see too in the most holy prayers the importance of God's law and the reality of final judgment, the reality of final judgment. So many people, they don't know about that. So that is for us as a, steward, as a stewardship uh, for, uh, to be our role. The role of stewardship reflects of life uh, anchor in the great truth of salvation. As revealed in the sanctuary doctrine, the more deeply we understand what Christ 
has done for us and what he is doing in us now. So uh, this is the doctrine of sanctuary that we have to let uh, people know about it. And now we come to uh, the next uh, the next one is called Christ-centered doctrine belief. Okay, the sanctuary, the sacrifice of Christ as a, an atonement for sin is the great truth around which all truth cluster. So, uh, so christ center, so christ center, and here it, they compare uh, to the the wheel. The wheel is just like bicycle wheel. Well, it's uh, kind of easy to understand. You see, the bicycle wheel, uh, we have, uh, okay, the outside, the outside, and then we have the 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 link from the outside to the the core to the center. So that center represents Jesus. So. Each one that link from outside to Jesus is all the truth. So uh, something like that. So uh, this is is easy to understand that Jesus at a center core, and uh, the sanctuary is culture cultural because it is where the great truth of salvation is expressed so powerfully, where the meaning of the cross is revealed. Okay, so and all our doctrine, one way or another, must be linked to the gospel, promise, and salvation. Like the spokes uh, of the wheel, other doctrine come out from the great truth of salvation by faith in Jesus. Okay. And the sacrifice of Christ as an atonement for sin is the great truth around which all other truths cluster. Those who study the Redeemer's uh, wonderful sacrifice grow in grace and knowledge. Okay, so our doctrine, uh, doctrinal belief, influence who we are and the direction in which we are going. The role of stewardship is to live doctrinal truth as it is in Jesus. Okay, okay, let's uh, move on. And now we move to, uh, move to, let's say John 14, 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life to uh, no man come unto the Father but by me. So this this uh, Bible text is uh, when you see Jesus in the sanctuary, uh, you uh, you can uh, understand clearly that Jesus said, "I am the way." He is from the earth when he resurrected, resurrected, and he go up to the heaven and to be in on on the right hand side of of the Father. So that means he is the way, only him that go to the Father. So, and he said, I am the truth. So he telling us uh, that he going to uh, help us and he going to be the high priest to be before God the Father. And he is uh, our advocate. So everything Jesus says is the truth. So we can see that clearly now. Uh, now we come to uh, come to another point. Another point. Let's see. Let's see now. Uh, sanctuary. Then they uh, sanctify them through Thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. Let's move on now. We come to the uh, three angel message. But you know, uh, God. Promise, promise that before he will let anything happen, uh, he would uh, give signal to us. You know, let us know, reveal 
uh, to us that is going to happen, just like in uh, the time of Noah. So before the flood uh, will uh, destroy all the human being, God sent Noah to, to proclaim, to pronounce uh, that this is going to happen, to, to preach. So uh, Noah has been preaching for 150 years, and then uh, up to the point that the flood coming, and nobody will believe. Uh, so the same thing is going to happen uh, on our uh, on our time. Uh, this is the uh, the end time. So God sent the angel to proclaim the three angel message. Here it said in Revelation 14, 6, it said, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people. So all the people. So just like God try to uh, tell the people in Noah's time. So this time, let the three angels uh, bring the message to tell every people on this earth. Okay? Uh, let's continue to see. Uh, verse 7, saying with a loud voice that made that everybody be able to be able to to, to hear that. Fear is that fear God and keep glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that make heaven and earth and the sea and the fountain of water. So here is so important that fear God. So that means respect God, keep uh, worship him and you know keep glory to him. So and God, which God is it? God the Creator. So that's what uh, we want everyone to fear God the Creator, not just anyone, but only God the Creator. And saying that the judgment is coming, so better worship God the Creator. Okay, let's see, continue. Uh, and there follow another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen that great city, because she make all nations drink of the wine of the red of her fornication. So Babylon is represent uh, our, uh, our situation, our time, our world at present time. So that fallen, that means that, you know, so many bad things, just like in Noah's time. So it cannot, uh, I mean, it's, really bad to the moral. So God said it's fallen, fallen. So better know that, that uh, all the the bad thing happening because of the, uh, they drink of the wine of the red of her fornication. So uh, this all the message that we have to let people know. Okay, let's continue to see. and. The third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. And so this, the final day, that the beast, Satan, is the beast. And, and then Satan tried to trick, uh, try to make people believe that he is uh, the, 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 the God. So if we believe in him and we have his image, we believe in him. And, uh, you know, this is the situation. Uh, uh, for example, that, that uh, one thing that Satan tried to uh, convince everyone to worship uh, on Sunday instead of Saturday. So this is the image of God. Uh, if you worship God on Sunday, because uh, that is not 
the the true God. That is not the real God. That is worship Satan, and and so this all the message. This is the end time message. So uh, we have to uh, tell people about this message. Let's continue to see. Uh, continue to see that uh, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God if we uh, have the image of the beast and if we trust, if we believe that uh, Sunday is the uh, day of worship which is uh, contrary to our true uh, holy day, which is on Saturday. So it said here, uh, which is pour out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angel and in the presence of the Lamb. So this talking about at the end. At the end, finally, uh, Satan will be, uh, Satan and his people, his angel, will be uh, burned by the fire at the end. So all of this message that we as a, 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 a steward, uh, and we have to take the role of the stewardship to let people know and <clears throat> so, not just, uh, of course, you know, we give the offering, tie and offering for the work of God. And in the meantime, we ourselves will be, uh, will be the person that bring all the message to the people. So, uh, talking about the role of stewardship, so now we understand that how important that we not just only uh, give tithe and offering, but we also have to proclaim the message of the three angels, the message that Jesus had to be uh, our center, uh, and Jesus, uh, what Jesus is doing in the sanctuary also. So this is the lesson that we should learn. And, uh, and today, uh, this is uh, <coughs> this is all that I would share with you. So hopefully that uh, we will see each other again for next time.